health and wellness starts to become as infectious as disease. Why? Because it's in the field, it's in consciousness, and you're witnessing the evidence in three-dimensional reality. That's so powerful, really powerful. Well, it makes me think about time. And I think about like talking to Greg Braden and talking about, and maybe you guys have had this conversation um, about just time, and you've surely had this experience though, and time accelerating and speeding up. And I'm wondering if there's any thoughts around that or like any scientific data or just or like anecdotal even with your experience and what you're seeing that and how important it is to anchor new realities like we've been talking yeah. about from the field because of this acceleration of time. And now I'm not saying I know that scientifically or factually. I'm just saying it feels like it. Mm. It feels like things are speeding up whether it's the veil thinning, creating, um, waking up, uh, it just feels like that. So what have you experienced? Um, I'll explain, for me, I'll explain it in two ways. I mean, one of the ways is unfortunately technology is actually causing us to experience more things in a shorter amount of time. Okay, I mean, yeah. yeah. Yeah, we can do so much yeah. more in a shorter amount of time. Uh, and the side effect of that, unfortunately, is that attention spans have shortened uh, because you can shift your attention from one thing to the next and if you keep doing something over and over again you develop a habit so so to the person who is in three-dimensional reality because of technology you can get more done in a shorter amount of time or more things are happening in a shorter amount of time so that uh, the, so there's an a quickening in human consciousness because the pace has increased right the problem with that is that you can get on amazon prime and you get something delivered to your door, door the next day or sometimes even the same day, there's this kind of entitlement of convenience that takes place where we really think that um, you know everything's gonna be handed to us or we mm -hmm. can get whatever we want. Nothing wrong with that, that's really cool, that's really great, but in the creative process, um, you actually have to get outside of time in order for you to be able to create. Because mm -hmm. if you're trying to predict what's gonna happen in the next moment, if you keep romancing what happens, you're not in the present moment. The familiar past is the known, the predictable future is the known, the present moment is the unknown. That is where all possibilities exist. So mm -hmm. yes, there is a function of three-dimensional reality and technology where more things are happening in a shorter amount of time. Certainly there's some type of energetic thing that's taking place uh, in so many ways. And to me, that energy is actually endorsing whoever you want to be. That's what I believe. Mm -hmm. So if you want to be a victim, get ready because it's going to get really good for you hmm. uh, because that energy is more available. If you want to heal, wow, there's a lot of people healing now and they're using that energy instrumentally yeah. in a positive way. Mm -hmm. So, so yes, there's a quickening that's taking place and it's creating quite a contrast or extremes that are taking place in reality and the more extreme it gets the more unstable the system right so uh, uh governments um uh, journalism uh, education religion medicine uh everything's kind of falling apart you know um uh, mm. and and it's very obvious to people that has to happen for a new consciousness to emerge. The thing is, we can't face these changes uh, programmed because we'll just add to uh, the chaos. We actually have to be relaxed and awake instead of stressed out and unconscious. And we have the data to show that when you're relaxed and awake, amazing things can actually happen to you instead of in survival, stressed out and in a program. So yeah. in order to create out something new, we gotta, be, we gotta be in the present moment and we have to be outside that pace mm -hmm. of where everything's moving very quickly. And, and mm -hmm. technology, unfortunately, is causing people, it's, it's causing people to think. Uh, uh, instead of them f for them to think on their own. And I'm concerned about that because um, I never p tell people what to think. I, I, I want them to think for themselves. I think it's really important for us to think for ourselves. So there's an acceleration that's taking place energetically, but I do think that that acceleration is really just endorsing uh, uh, who, who you're being. So master the moment and, yeah. and learn how to be a creator. Uh, I think that amazing things happen. And, and that's exactly what we're discovering uh, over and over again and, and just witnessing the the science is uh, absolutely supporting that that you are greater than you think more powerful than you know more unlimited than you can ever dream we have the data over and over again that suggests that and the yeah. testimonials that we have in hundreds of people we have 
cancer researchers standing mm -hmm. on the stage with cancer completely gone we see stage four cancers and bones and organs and liver and lungs Com metastatic cancer just doesn't typically go away um very easily and out of the bones there's no sign of it anywhere i mean not once not, not twice over and over and we had two people at an event that were blind i mean no <laughs> hmm. you know i'm you know I'm a healthy skeptic. Wow. I mean, this woman That's saw crazy. her face for the first time in, in the mirror. That's and crazy. It was too, too good of a story to pass up. You can't make these up. So the testimony is the four mm -hmm. minute mile. What was once considered impossible. I mean, muscular dystrophy, really? The physicians that were in the audience that, that were disbelievers, they, they, they were in tears. They just could not imagine that this could actually take place. It wasn't matter to matter. You know, it wasn't 3D reality trying to change 3D reality. That was not it. It was, it was energy that was actually informing matter. They could never do it that way. It, could, it had to, it had to ha happen another way. So you have this amazing evidence in scientific research, and you have this amazing evidence in human testimony. And evidence is the loudest voice, and I'm so optimistic now for the first time in a long time that we actually can actually find our way here, that, that, that we have to come together, community of the same consciousness that isn't angry, they've overcome their anger, that isn't fearful, yeah. they've overcome their fear, they're not suffering and pain, they've overcome that in their own personal work, and they're actually showing the world what love looks like, they're showing the world what greatness looks like, they're demonstrating for the world, they're not talking about it philosophically, they're actually demonstrating who they are, so the person who witnesses them says, wow, something is really different about you, what's different about you? I don't know. Well, there's something different about you because the person is not the the person who's perceiving them doesn't match their memory of them any longer. There's yeah, something different right. about the person, and that's exactly what this world needs. That collective networks of observers wow. determine reality. Do you believe More in the hundredth monkey theory? I do. I'm actually. I'm. I'm not. It's not that I believe it. I'm, I know it now because I'm <laughs> seeing four people with Raynaud syndrome in one event all heal. I mean, I mean, that is, that is a collective, that's a morphogenic What's field. What's the there. possibility that we see the hundredth monkey theory uh, come into effect on our level of consciousness globally within our I think, lifetime? I think as we get close, as, as time speeds up like it is, it gets more and more unpredictable to determine when it's going to happen. But I will tell you this, I'm so optimistic if we can continue uh, staying awake, relaxed and awake, and continually doing the work and keep pushing the edge of what's possible. The brain, it's really funny, you know, the brain actually changes the most when you get to the point where you think you can't go any further. If you go past that point, if you just go past that point, mm -hmm. that's when you see the greatest brain changes. And so mm -hmm. we actually push people past that point and we yeah. give them some tools to what to do there. And lo and behold, we, we see it young people, old people, we see it educated, uneducated, we see uh, healthy, sick. I mean, it doesn't matter. It's uh, cause none of that matters. It's just, it, it's, it's just their, their ability to be able to execute. So well, it's the reprogramming. It's, 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 it's like unprogramming, reprogramming. It can, you know, when you, you know, use a fire, what wall service to, you know, burn things down. It's alchemy too, right? It's some mm -hmm. sort of alchemical process happening where you are like short circuiting something and growing something new and growing pains are called that for a reason. Well, let's say, let's make it really simple. If we are pure love, if you're on the journey, anything that is not love and you must die, and or in order for you to find yeah. true or true love, pure love, a part of you must die. And I think that's yeah. the difference between right. knowing the path uh, uh, and walking right. the path. And walking right. the path right. is really what it's about. Right. How do you, as you move through your life and you have done such phenomenal things and continue to do more and more, how do you get your information to know what comes next? Like where what direction to turn your head, to turn your energy? Where does that come from and in what form? Um, well, I never planned on doing any of this, <laughs> really. Um, yeah, and my theory from the very beginning is uh, when when this kind of started to become of interest to people, I just said to my staff, um, here's how it's going to work. Um, I'll only go where I'm invited. If I'm not invited, I'll be a chef. I'll do something else. And so, so um, I'm constantly building my model of what I understand. And I'm like you always have a 1000 questions. Now, mm -hmm. it's so much better for me to sit down and take a few minutes and instead of 
turning on my phone or doing any of that. I actually like the process of contemplation. I like the process of saying to myself, so what do you know? Mm-hmm. Or at what point or at what point do you stop believing that this is the truth? Let's get right to that point and let's let's build that understanding. So I'm constantly building my model and then I'm tearing it down. Mm-hmm. And then I'm challenging it and building it up again. And if I can't find like there's something that doesn't fit, then I got to find information yeah. somewhere that makes it fit, that makes sense to me. But then it's not enough for me there. Then I got to like, then I got to experience it. Like someone said to me, so what do you, someone said to me yesterday, so what are you doing in your morning meditations? I'm like, well, it's really funny because I'm, I'm actually developing a new understanding, a new model, and I want to teach it at the follow-up uh, uh, next month. And I'm actually practicing this, this new meditation to have the experience so that I can teach it better. So if I can have the experience yeah. of that knowledge yeah. and the model that I build, I know the journey and I can teach it much better. So I work really hard at being the example of, of what I teach. And I work really hard at getting information either from uh, well references or whatever, but also the information that I love to get it comes to me when I start connecting and then it all kind of makes sense. And so I think of as many ways as I can to teach it, but I also love to have the experience because when I have the experience then I can really teach it uh, on, a, on a much deeper level. <music>